This must feel like a dream. All the leaves are brown. When that swirled in your mind at night. And the sky is blue. And by day, stirred your soul. California dreaming love. The playoff semifinals. I'm set to win a At the Rose Bowl. All the leaves are you're here not by way of wonder, but by acts of will. By walking on, rising up, and walking off with the high speed. He's a surgeon! He's a magician! He's gonna get into the end zone! By standing your ground. Gotta get him at midfield! And gaining it with a pack of bulldogs unbound. 40, 30, right to the end zone! 10, 5, touchdown! This is no dream, but it is a vision. There's something sacred about this game and this stadium. An American tradition. The granddaddy of them all. Oklahoma and Georgia continue their magical ride in the playoff semifinals at the Rose Bowl. It's the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, the 104th edition of the granddaddy of them all. Postseason football invented right here. And today's matchup is between the second seeded Oklahoma Sooners, champions of the Big 12, and the third seeded Georgia Bulldogs, champions of the SEC for the first time in a dozen years. An experience to cherish and savor for Oklahoma and Georgia faithful. Just the second Rose Bowl game for each side. Georgia last year, New Year's Day 1943, when they brought a Heisman Trophy winner, Frank Sinkwich, and they shut out UCLA. And that pigskin played a part, and it's made the return trip to Pasadena. Oklahoma brings in this season's Heisman Trophy winner, carrying the Pretenders sign. Lee Corso may have picked the Sooners just now, but he labeled them Pretenders preseason. Mayfield has been fueled by that. He's battled flu-like symptoms all week, but in the pregame, he seemed filled with his trademark fire and energy and ready to go with this semifinal game. Happy New Year from Pasadena. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit, my partner here working his 11th Rose Bowl game more than any other analyst Listen. ever. Congratulations. Honored. Players. Humbled. Thank you very much. They're all special. But yeah. when it's a playoff semifinal game leading off today's doubleheader with the nightcap and the All-State Sugar Bowl, that's the familiar game. Clemson and Alabama in the trilogy. This is the fresh matchup. Somehow they've never played before. And they, they both have different storylines. The game later tonight is going to be a lot of fun to watch Nick Saban try to get revenge against the Clemson Tigers and Dabo Sweeney. This game does feel fresh. Think about Lincoln Riley. First year he's been a head coach. He brings the Sooners out to Pasadena, and the same could be said for Kirby Smart, just his second year. He learned so much from Nick Saban, got his own program back at his alma mater, and here they are in the playoff out at the Rose Bowl. Pretty special. Sooners back-to-back-to-back to back to back winners of the Big 12, led, of course, by the Heisman Trophy winner, Baker Mayfield, the, the magician, the maestro of this offense, and they score fast and furious. You know Mayfield's story. He won a state championship in Texas high school football, but was not showered with big-time offers. Walked on at Texas Tech, had a pretty good freshman season, but then left and walked on again at Oklahoma the game after Trevor Knight had just beaten Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. He won the job two-time Big 12 Player of the Year and, of course, the Heisman Trophy winner. He brings the energy and he brings the fire, and his team certainly feeds off of all that, Kirk. Well, that fire and that energy is, is paramount. I mean, we, we heard about he was not feeling well. First thing I thought about is I know he's going to play, but can he play 60 minutes and provide that spark that his team feeds off of? Now, as much as we talk about Baker Mayfield, if you're not familiar with Oklahoma, in my opinion, it's about their balance. It's it's about being able to run the football with these guys right here. Rodney Anderson has really come on the second half of the season. And a true freshman, Trey Sermon, kind of a one-two punch for the Oklahoma offense. This offensive line, keep in mind, all five returned from last year. A veteran group. They've seen a lot of different defenses. They get a hat on a hat. And if they give Rodney Anderson room, look out. We talk so much about Georgia's backs. Be careful with what Oklahoma can do. How about Baker Mayfield? This is an example of why his team loves him. He's 40 or 50 yards downfield looking to try to pick up a block. The reason I think this is so important, when Oklahoma runs the ball, 
Got defenders get their eyes in the backfield, and it creates play action opportunities for the quarterback, Baker Mayfield, to be able to make big plays. And this is the thing that I think George is most concerned. Even when, when you get in, you have a chance to bring him down. He's stout. He's very calm and poised, and he's able to get out and create. And it puts the defense in a very difficult situation. So it's not just the execution. It's kind of that backyard football stuff that you, it's unpredictable. How does Georgia do in defending him in that scenario? Maybe could tell us whether or not Georgia ends up winning the game. Yeah, Oklahoma creates more big plays than any offense. The plays are called by Lincoln Riley, who became the head coach just seven months ago, taking over for the legend Bob Stoops, the youngest head coach in the FBS. His counterpart is Kirby Smart in his second season at Georgia, but he's got a championship pedigree. He was a part of four championship <laughs> teams as an Alabama assistant under Nick Saban. I, it, it's been so much fun to watch Kirby finally get a chance to run his own, own program, and after all he learned from Nick Saban, but to be able to go back to your alma mater in just the second year, he changed the culture, and we can clearly see this team have a different identity, and a big part of the reason that they're here is that identity and what they've learned from him. He changed the culture, but they got back to old-fashioned, hard-knocking Georgia football with a, a trio of running backs, actually. Well, you think of Kirby Smart, you think of defense. But the reason they're here is the tandem of the backs that they have and how physical they are at the line of scrimmage. Everybody wants to see the big, bad SEC offense, the big offensive line against the Big 12 defense. How will Oklahoma match the physicality? Offensive line, Nick Chubb, who is a, one of the more physical backs, low center of gravity, great balance, bounces off of arm tackles. He's kind of the thunder to the thunder and lightning. Sony Michelle, much quicker, much more elusive, but as he'll show you here, if you give him enough room right there, he also has some physicality and can run through those arm tackles. Now, in my opinion tonight, Oklahoma's gonna stack the line. They have to. And when you do, true freshman Jake Fromm, the quarterback, will be given opportunities for things like this. Open receivers downfield, because the defense is so concerned about that big, strong running game, I'm telling you, this guy right here, if Georgia wins, could be the MVP because of his ability to make some big plays in the passing game. True freshman, but not a normal true freshman. 19 <laughs> years old, incredibly poised. I ask him, when's the last time in your life you felt uncomfortable? <laughs> that was a Could, great... Could, couldn't think of a time when he was uncomfortable. We'll see how he handles this today. I don't know what I enjoyed more, <laughs> you asking that question or him being perplexed. Like, <laughs> I, I really don't know the last time I felt uncomfortable. This is a true freshman playing at the Rose Bowl in a playoff and as calm as he could be, like he's a junior or senior, as far as just the bigger the stage, I think the he's one of those guys, the better he plays. Joined by Maria Taylor and Tom Rinaldi in the sidelines. Here's Maria with Kirby Smart. Good afternoon, Chris. All right, Kirby, you said the biggest part of this game is managing anxiety and emotions. At the initial second stick off the clock, what will be an indicator your team's ready to go? I don't think you can tell who's ready to go from the, the, the few seconds we've got left. I know both teams have been are prepared. It's been a long preparation. We're excited and ready to go. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Now we go over to the Oklahoma sideline with Tom Rinaldi. Maria, we talked all week about Baker Mayfield and the flu and the cold that he's fought since the Sooners arrived here in Southern California. Speaking with him on the field during pregame warm-ups, he characterized his energy and his voice on a scale of 1 to 10 as a 12. The voice could be important. When you watch the Sooners play, you'll often see Mayfield go up and down the line to make checks and change plays. He'll need a full voice in order to do that. He let out a, yell, a loud yell, Chris, as if to prove that he'd be more than capable. Something to keep an eye on as we see him typically get his group juiced, Chris. It is, Tom. That was Riley's principal concern. Would his quarterback have full voice in his team, Kirk, like he does? Uh, he is fired up watching him in the pregame, the body language. He looks like Baker Mayfield. Lincoln Riley has got to be excited that that flu bug hit him as early as it did and gave him time to recover. His fans were in full voice. Austin Seibert, the busy kicker for the Sooners. He handles the punting, place kicking, and kickoff duties. Got a very strong lead. Rarely allows a return. Elijah Holyfield is deep for Georgia, along with Miko Hardman. Here we go, the playoff semifinal, Rose Bowl number 104. Seibert drives it deep. A touchback. And so we'll see Jake Fromm, who showed his poise and his talent as a Little League World Series star back at Williamsport. 12 years old, and he one of those guys in a Little League World Series that just did it all. Made plays in the field, was a pitcher, hit home runs, and I think that poise early in his career as an athlete has really carried over throughout his high school career, and now, of course, 
in the early part of his career in Athens as a true freshman. His first career start in South Bend, night game, prime time under the lights, and of course got a win. And I think from there, this team is really just fed off of his leadership. The senior Nick Chubb is the tailback to the left of Fromm. They fake it to him, and Fromm throws on the first play. And it's complete. And off and running is Javon Wims, and the talented receiver out near midfield. Chick-fil-A impact players. Chick-fil-A impact players, you get to start with the running game, but as Oklahoma is worried about Nick Chubb, it's Javon Wims, our other impact player. Okoronkwo is going to provide the pass rush, and Kenneth Murray, number nine in the middle, another true freshman playing, has got to be physical against this run. We talked about Georgia having opportunities to throw with Oklahoma concerned in the run game. Coming again on the second play, ball comes out. It's ruled incomplete. That was in and out of the hands of Wims as Trey Norwood, the true freshman, was defending. Wims, a terrific blocker. He was shut out in the SEC championship game by Auburn in the Bulldogs' win, but already on the board with 21 yards, the first catch here. Everybody, I think, looked at this matchup and thought, boy, the physicality, the running game of Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle against an Oklahoma defense. How are they going to match up with that? And I think Oklahoma got so tired of hearing about it. They're determined to load that line of scrimmage and force Jake Fromm to throw, especially in the early going, which I think Jake Fromm welcomes. Second and 10, Chubb's first carry into heavy traffic in the middle. The 225-pounder who's second only to Herschel Walker in terms of career yards in the SEC. Look at the amount of bodies up into the line of scrimmage. I mean, here's Stephen Parker who ends up making a play. He's a safety. You've got eight, close to nine guys up at the line of scrimmage. That's what I talked about is Oklahoma is determined to get extra bodies up there against this running game. Georgia's been a pretty good third down team. They did struggle in the last game in Atlanta against Auburn. They need seven here to keep the drive alive. Sony Michelle in the slot. Ron has time, flips it over the head of the tight end, Charlie Warner. And here comes a punt. Remember, a lot of pressure, long layoff, teams feeling each other out, a lot of excitement and emotion. That time Jake Fromm, that ball just sailed on him a bit. Cameron Nizalek, the punter, who's a graduate transfer from Columbia University. Big upgrade in this area. Georgia's punting and kicking not strong a year ago. Very strong this season. C.D. Lamb, a true freshman wide receiver, back deep at the Sooners' 10-yard line. Nizalek boots it. Right up and over the head of Lamb, and it's a touchback. Now Baker Mayfield finally taking the field here after a 30-day layoff. You can see a chance to join Colt McCoy is only the second quarterback. A rival school is leading the nation in completion percentage. It's 71% coming into tonight. Yards per attempt, almost 12 yards. And the touchdown to interception there at the bottom. 41 touchdowns to only five interceptions. It tells you the kind of decision-making and the accuracy that Baker has played with this year. He's seen it all. Can Georgia possibly confuse him today? It's a first down handoff and right into the teeth of that Bulldogs front. Jonathan Ledbetter got there in a hurry. Oh, what a great battle up front. I mentioned Oklahoma's offensive line. All five returned from last year. And they, this will be their more, most physical challenge that they have faced with Georgia in this front three that they play with their defensive linemen. Take it to Anderson. Mayfield rolls out, puts it over the middle, and the catch is made by Dimitri Flowers, the H-back with first down yardage to the 36. He is a weapon in this offense. Yeah, he sure is, and that's what they like to get him. We showed that in the open, how he sneaks behind those linebackers off of play action, and this is where Baker Mayfield can really crank it up. If they make a first down, expect tempo. Play action across the middle. Flowers again, rumbling into Georgia territory, and in a place devoted to Flowers, Dimitri making an impact early. Oklahoma is taking advantage of an aggressive Georgia defense. Coming downhill, great job of being on front of that with the play action pass. Right here's their target, and they get down in this area. It's Anderson in the flat. And Rodney Anderson knocked down after a very short gain. All these Sooner backs are very natural, gifted receivers. Yeah, I think the versatility, the physicality of how they run, but the soft hands out of the backfield. And in Lincoln Riley's system, he demands that from his running backs. It's not just about running the ball. 
I think, I think Dimitri Flowers is a great example of being so versatile. He can block, he can run, he can catch the ball. Keep in mind, Mark Andrews, again, there to slot at the bottom, is a dangerous weapon and a tough matchup down in this area. Second and eight. Play action, flip to the end zone, touchdown! The Sooners strike quickly, Marquise Hollywood Brown. I think the quarterback looks fully energized and razor sharp. Four for four on an 80-yard touchdown drive. It's exactly how Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma wanted to start the game. Defense gets Georgia off the field. The Sooners get the ball and go right down the field and put it on the board. Cyber. That's the conversion. Wow, what a start. Yeah, a little bit of a miscommunication. Watch out, he doesn't reroute him to the right. Nobody puts his hands on Brown. Nothing at all to slow him down. The corner, Baker, didn't do anything. Watch out, he didn't get his hands on him. Makes it easy to be able to get behind him. The safety's late and coming over, and Baker puts it right on the money for the touchdown. And it's hooray for Hollywood as the Sooners strike quickly. Hybert, another deep driving boot out of the end zone. Chubb on the toss into traffic. They get a good block on the edge, and Chubb turning for a first down, running through tackles out near midfield. Big Isaiah win, the tackle sprung him. Boy, what a great block on the outside. Watch that physicality by Miles McKinney right there, opened up the edge. They want to get the ball on the perimeter. And that was a couple great blocks on the edge there that were able to spring Nick Chubb loose. 25-yard chunk for the senior. A timeless play, the Georgia toss sweep, isn't it? Chubb's got it again. This time flying up with Stephen Parker, the safety to beat him after a one-yard game. And I don't think you, Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma, I mean, you talked earlier about how this is a team that starts to kind of they find a way to get a chip on their shoulder no matter who they're playing. And I think doing a lot of interviews and being asked a lot about how do you match up with that physicality, I think Mike Stoops has his defense really buying into taking away the, that running game and trying to match up up front. First carry for Sony Michelle who cuts it back in the clear. Michelle. Barrels down inside the Oklahoma 30, and already this Georgia tandem flexing. Well, they're doing a good job of these receivers being able to get blocks on the outside. Watch the timing with Michelle here. Just finds the crease, and look at downfield blocking there by five. Godwin will not let the young corner Trey Norwood off of him. And this is what I'm talking about with Chubb, more physical, and then you deal with Michelle, different change of pace, and a much different kind of acceleration. He's still pretty physical, though, isn't he, Sony? Closing in on a thousand yards. If they get to him, and now from a first down throw, again, it's high. This time brought in by the tight end, Charlie Warren, the sophomore with his seventh catch of the season. Caleb Kelly tackled him. Doing a good job of giving him time to throw. I think, again, early down play action pass. To Jake Fromm, think about being a young, true freshman quarterback. He's played with tremendous poise all year long. Being a good complement to that running game. Still, I think, settling in here to find his rhythm throwing the ball. They fake it to Michelle. From look downfield, now checks down, delivers a strike, complete for a first down to Wims inside the 15. So Wims, the senior from Miami, who grew up mainly a basketball player, making a big impact here already. And a, 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 another good job of using the play action, getting the linebackers up. And when you get the linebackers up, it makes it easier to be able to throw the ball behind them. You see Beal 14 trying to get back into position. But I, I'll be honest, I think Fromm was even late. But because the linebackers were up front at the line of scrimmage, he's still able to squeeze it in there. Take it to Michelle again. Fromm looked over the middle, now dumps it down, caught, touchdown. Michelle out of the backfield, and the dogs answer quickly. Running to set up the pass.
Great job of mixing up the plays on that drive by Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator. You saw some running from Chubb and Michelle, and you saw the danger of the play action pass off of it. Rodrigo Blankenship, kicker awarded a scholarship the day before, kicked the game winner at Notre Dame on for the conversion. So the Sooners, a sixth play touchdown drive. The Dogs answer with one of their own. Yeah, the play action. Kenneth Murray right here comes up, gets a little bit lost, and by the time he realizes that he has to account for Sony Michelle, it's too late. He slides out of the backfield, does a good job on his play fake, see the late reaction, and again, a great job by Chaney of mixing up the play calling on that drive. Michelle's first touchdown reception of the season. Even at seven. Sella Sutton. Deep for the Sooners. And can ship the booted away with that trademark black eyeglasses. He's worked hard in his distance on kickoffs this season, and that's a touchback. He's slinging out out of the backfield. And this is the very fleet Marquise Brown around the edge picks up about nine driven out by Dominic Sanders, the veteran safety. Kind of an extension of their running game. You know, you see a lot of the jet sweep a lot around college football, but with Oklahoma, not only are they gonna hand it to him, but if you're not gonna respect it, and you leave a guy like Brown out in the flat who's got a little bit of space, they're gonna flip it out there and pick up nine yards. Second and 10. Baker just turns and looks at Anderson. There was some kind of deception there. Anderson off and running a stiff arm into Georgia territory, and Rodney Anderson rumbles down in the red zone. A huge game with a funky start to it. Yeah, funky start. Watch the block by the big fella, Brown. He takes out one guy, he takes out another guy. And I'll tell you, Rodney Anderson is just slippery. Physical runner at 220 pounds. He got 45 yards. He's got it again. Makes a cut. Barrels down inside the 10. So Baker turned his right, but then took the ball in his left hand and just handed it off to the back. That's exactly right. Just kind of remember, this Georgia defense is they're keyed in on six. Whatever he can do to try to get them off balance. Playing at warp speed. Anderson again barrels into the end zone. Two drives, two touchdowns for OU. This is a defense, Kirk, that allowed an average of 13 a game. OU's got 14 in two possessions. And they've had two drives of six plays that have resulted in touchdowns. So much for Baker Mayfield in the flu bug. That 45-yard run by Anderson that set up his touchdown, the longest rushing play the Dogs have allowed this season. This is why the Georgia Defensive Brain Trust and Kirby Smart were so concerned. Watch the left guard, Chris, Ben Powers. Watch how he get, comes down, initially down on the nose guard, then climbs up to the All-American, Roquan Smith. By getting up to Roquan Smith, you let Rodney Anderson, with his physicality himself, to run downhill, he's going to run right through that secondary for a touchdown. And the head coach and the play caller says, we could not have dreamt up a better start to this Rose Bowl. A scary good start for this Oklahoma offense. Seibert has been busy already and for the third time just drives a line drive kick through the end zone. Jim Chaney, the veteran of 32 years coaching, calling the plays for the Bulldogs. He says that his quarterback here from more advanced than Drew Brees was at this stage of his Purdue career. Chuck cuts it back in a strong gain. First down yardage across the 35 before Parnell Motley wrestled him down. See, th this is what is really hard when you defend Georgia. All the action is going this way, but watch what happens. Right here, now he's going to cut back. And that's the thing that Georgia's done such a good job of, and it keeps you honest on the backside. Play action. Fromm, again, good protection. Flips it off underneath, and it's Charlie Warner again, his uncle Scott, and the Hall of Famer for Georgia, a defensive back. And only six catches coming in, but already a few today. I, I, I think he's probably athletically a, a one of the more gifted tight ends. I know Nauta gets a lot of recognition, but Warner, for a young guy at 6'5", 250, can do a lot of things. He can block and he can also catch. I thought Jake Fromm, again, play action on first and 10, keep those linebackers guessing, run versus pass, catching them out of position and picking up a first down. 
And Cheney calling plays that lead to very short, comfortable throws for his quarterback. Checks it down again and dumps it short. And there's a catch made down inside of the 30-yard line. He, he is now four of five on first down throws for 45 yards. I'm telling you, that is going to be a big theme tonight. Until Oklahoma backs up, until they start to respect his ability to throw, I don't blame Jim Chaney at all. I think that's you're more have more of an advantage throwing on first and ten than waiting till third down. Chubb in the ball game. They flip it near side. And this is Terry Godwin who makes his first catch, driven out right at the line of scrimmage by Carnell Motley. Is only 175, but played physical that time. That's the run pass option. It's been a bigger part of this offense, and that gives the quarterback a decision to make. If you want to run it. You run it, and if not, if you think you can get the ball to the outside, flip it out there. Goes back to his baseball days, like a sidearm, just a quick pitch out there to try to give you a better chance, but Oklahoma defends it pretty well. Tougher to do RPOs into the boundary where there's not as much room to run. The dogs need five on third down. They're in fringe field goal range for Blankenship at the moment. Here's the best pass rusher for the Sooners, Okoronkwo. They haven't pressured from yet. This time he backpedals. They affect the throw. Flips it to Michelle. But the Sooners are all over the running back there. Motley made the tackle short of first down yardage. There we show you before the snap, Okoronkwo. He actually fights through two offensive linemen. Great suddenness. An SEC type of defensive end. He gets through two offensive linemen. Cleveland and Andrew Thomas, a true freshman. And he didn't get to him for the sack, but he forces him to have to throw the ball earlier than he wanted to and allows the defense to rally to the ball. So here comes Rodrigo Blankenship, nickname of Hot Rod since he was a child. This is just a yard short of his career long. This from 48. Drives it. But it drifts and misses wide left. Well, the dogs eight play 44 yard drive comes up empty He just hooked it looked like he hit it clean See the snap hole everything's perfect end over end. He just pulled it And that's just the third miss of the season from Blankenship and Every time the Sooners defense can get off the field without allowing points Lincoln Riley feels good because Baker Mayfield and the offense clicking so far and the way they're executing you do not want to get behind and have to play catch up to Baker Mayfield. Mayfield looks left, delivers a strike, and that's Brown beating man coverage out near midfield. C.D. Lamb check at the true freshman with his first catch. Yeah, C.D. Lamb is a guy that I think has a chance to have a big game today. He's a true freshman, put a lot of weight on since he's been at school. Good job with that move to the, it sets it up with an outside move, gives him room to go back to the inside against McGee. End of an electric first quarter at the Rose Bowl. Sooners marching, trying to add to a seven-point lead. Back after these messages, you're watching the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual on ESPN. Set for the second quarter, college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Let's hear from both sidelines. First to Maria Taylor. Maria, what do you got on the Georgia side? Chris, right now the concern for the defense is communication. Getting the calls in in time for everyone to be in position. Defensive line coach Trey Scott says they're killing us on second and medium. We can't even substitute right now, and we can't get in position to strike. Now over to Oklahoma, or Tom Rinaldi on Oklahoma sideline. Maria, we've seen the signature passion and swagger from Baker Mayfield. There has been no reduction at one point on the sideline. And looked over and said you might want to tell them over there good luck at another point He looked at Lee Corso gave a huge smile the pretender sign. We know all about it Chris and Three more quarters to go though Tom Baker begins the second quarter with play action and it's Andrews the tight end a tough matchup for Lorenzo Carter the linebacker It's 11 yards and a first down and a really good route all the momentum of that play action everything moving right and Andrews himself actually running moving from the left side of that offensive line to the right with Baker Mayfield only to put the brakes on and go back the other way and a very tough play there for Lorenzo Carter to try to stay with him Andrews winner of the John Mackey Award is the nation's top tight end. 58 catches on the season. Mayfield, 7 for 8 start. 83 yards and a touchdown. 
Dogs crowd the line. This is Anderson who breaks free. Rodney Anderson in the clear, headed for the end zone. Forty-one yards. You said it, Kirk. This offense about a lot more than number six. The balance has been there all year. And Baker Mayfield gets most of the attention. But as I said, when you talked about it throughout this broadcast, it's about being balanced and being able to run the football. Already over 100 yards rushing for this team. And when you can run the ball, it makes the play action and Baker Mayfield go. And he's right. Maybe he is right. You might want to tell them that they need some help because it's tough to defend them when they can run the ball. Cyber still perfect for PATs. Three possessions. They've scored three times. Look at these linemen get up to that second level. I mean, you're letting him, and of course, a great block by C.D. Lamb. But when you're letting these linemen, Eric Wren, the center, Ben Powers on that left side, Orlando Brown, they're putting a hat on a hat, and there's all that space, and C.D. Lamb picks up Aaron Davis. There's nobody left. They've run 17 plays. Sooners have gained 209 yards. And Happy New Year, everyone. Dick Enberg, and I'm privileged to be here. My first Rose Bowl game. 138 left. White. The legend, our friend and colleague Dick Enberg, very much on our minds today. He loved the Rose Bowl as much as anything he was involved in in his legendary six-decade career. He called nine of these Rose Bowl games for NBC with Merlin Olsen in the 80s. His very favorite one was his very first. USC upset number one Ohio State. Charles White was the hero that day. Cyber to boot it away again as the dogs find themselves a couple touchdowns behind. And I know, Kirk, for you, you know, coming of age in, in the Midwest, watching this game every year, Dick Enberg's calls were important. And when you grow up in the Midwest, the, the Rose Bowl is iconic. And being of that age, my first memory, I was about 10 years old, of the Rose Bowl was at Rose Bowl. Ohio State and USC, Charles White, Arch Leisher on the other side, and Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen. And I watched every single year, every play of the Rose Bowl. And his voice, as much as I love Keith Jackson, Dick Enberg for me, is synonymous of, of this game and uh, in the memories that I have of it. He felt it as well as anyone, and that came through, that smile in his voice. And as Dick would say, oh my, what a start for the Sooners offense and Baker Mayfield. From and Georgia back to work, and Sonny Michelle breaks free. Michelle in the clear, a foot race. What an answer from Georgia. 75 yards. Down early, but still very explosive. You see the electricity that Sony Michelle can provide. Wow. Talking about needing an answer. That's exactly what they got. Second touchdown for Michelle, who caught his first touchdown reception earlier. Longest run of the season for the dogs. And puts him over a thousand yards for the season. Chris, what a mistake here by the freshman Kenneth Murray. He's in the middle. You're going to see motion. Watch his reaction. He takes himself right out of the play. You have a defensive back responding, also the linebacker. There's nobody left. Great job by the right side of that offensive line. Thomas and Cleveland, they collapse down. But what made it so much easier is that Kenneth Murray saw that jet action. Watch how he reacts to that. Two defenders, a corner, Trey Norwood, the middle linebacker, Kenneth Murray, both go with them. They bust, and by that bust, it creates a huge space. All that was left there was the defensive lineman. Lincoln Chip boots it high. The dip won't let it bounce in the end zone. Mayfield. Looks at field. Now fires over the middle. Enders the tight end. Goes up and makes a looping catch into Georgia territory. He was wide open. Watch the eyes of Baker Mayfield. 
move the linebacker right here. See his eyes looking to the left, moves the linebacker, and it goes right over top of Reggie Carter. I'm telling you, Baker Mayfield is a master of being comfortable in the pocket, moving safeties and linebackers, and then knowing that he's going to come back and make the throw, and he puts it up high where Mark Andrews, the big tight end, can go up and make a play. Third catch for the leading receiver in this Oklahoma team. 29 yards that time. Play action. Mayfield still got it. Takes a shot over the middle. Jump ball incomplete. Forced it into double coverage. DeAndre Baker was covering Lamb. Well, I think that's a little mix up there by C.D. Lamb. The angle that he took on the post. He cut that a little bit short. I think he should have tried to keep it a little skinnier. That's the way Baker Mayfield tried to throw that away from the defender over top of Dominique Sanders. And Lamb was cutting that a little bit more too far across the middle of the field. He needed to try to stay a little straighter upfield. Just the second incompletion so far for Mayfield. Dimitri Flowers up to the top and the left there in the slot. Mayfield looked that way. Now fires in the seam off the hands of the receiver Lamb. That one should have been caught inside the 10. And they continue to work the middle of this defense. Lamb, I just talked about how he took a poor angle. Now this time they come right back to him. Very talented, a future superstar, a true freshman. The ball is a little bit behind, but still hits both his hands and a ball that he should be able to catch. Brace himself for the hit and get the first down. Sooners two for two on third down. This is the first third and long though. They need ten. Empty backfield. Sermon. And now they motion Brown. They fake it to him. Flip it short. Bedette in traffic. It's Lamb. Check it down to the 15-yard line. They're just one step ahead of Georgia. Roquan Smith comes on the blitz. They bring everybody. They take a chance. And what it does is it allows the offensive lineman. Watch this blitz right here. But watch the lineman. Get downfield. They allow him to come through. Looks like Baker's in trouble. Then he dumps it down, senses it, and then Lamb has a convoy in front of him, and they pick up the first down. Great job by Lincoln Riley on the call. At 14 and third and 10. Haven't seen Roquan Smith make a real impact play yet. And they hand it off to Sermon. And that Georgia native squirms for about three. Bit of a high snap. Baker Mayfield does a good job of not only being able to get the snap, but getting the hand. You like off. this young back, don't you? Yeah, I, I think you know. I think Rodney Anderson really, really special. But I don't think you lose a lot when Trey Sermon comes into the game. Catches the ball out of the backfield. Physical at about 225 pounds. Anderson, we're told, just had the wind knocked out of him in that big tackle. So we would expect to see him return. But it's still Sermon in the game. Tough guy. Sanders back in the red zone one more time. Mayfield across the middle in traffic. This time the catch is made by C.D. Lamb. They go back to him a third time. And they got a first and goal. Nope. Now they're saying it's, it's incomplete. Did not hold the ball long enough. Boy, Baker Mayfield, you talk about trying to squeeze it into a tight window. And he keeps going back to number nine. This entire drive, it's been Baker Mayfield looking for C.D. Lamb. Good effort there. I don't, you know, I think Aaron Davis, by not giving up on that play, I think his right hand got in there. I think he pulled that ball out of there away from Lamb. Great play by Davis, who Mel Tucker calls the most valuable player maybe on this defense because he plays so many spots. It's a tough series for the freshman wide receiver, and it sets up a third and seven. Mayfield. Trout. Sack for the first time. Tyler Clark. The sophomore defensive tackle, third sack of the season. Well, this whole month, they've talked about not trying to get upfield against the athletic and mobile Baker Mayfield, but collapse the pocket, which means the defensive ends have got to get upfield, and then they need to push from up the middle, and Tyler Clark, the sophomore that time, is able to provide that and comes up with a big sack. Cyber very reliable inside 40, 11 and 12. This season, this from 38. And no problem for the junior. So Oklahoma kept out of the end zone for the first time, but go back up double digits. The trip home is better after a win. Yeah. 
Just the first kickoff opportunity for Miko Hardman. Brings it out. Slips a tackle. Still going. Hardman, a dangerous returner out at the 35. A flag does come down late in the return. And a sack on first down. Not fooled by the play action was the safety, Stephen Parker, who came flying in. That's the Sooners' first sack. Charlie Warner just didn't see him, the tight end, 89. He's right here, and here's where he's going to sneak in and come in. Watch 89. He's kind of looking around. He's got to be able to kick to the outside along with Sonny Michelle. So Sonny Michelle, somebody's got to pick him up. I think Stephen Parker was the most surprised of anybody that he came free and was able to get to Jake Fromm. We talked about Kenneth Murray, the true freshman. who plays fast and plays aggressive, but he's been out of position a couple times. And not just freshman quarterbacks, freshman middle linebackers under the gun today, too. Fromm fires downfield. It's one of those back shoulder fades. They throw so well, but that time Javon Wins could not beat the coverage of Trey Norwood. And Trey Norwood, very, very fortunate. We keep saying the word true freshman, the two words true freshman. And here's another one. Norwood 13. A little hesitation, a little stop and go by Wims. And you can see the freshman never even knew the football was thrown. He was fortunate. With it ball underthrown, the receiver coming back. So a lot of times you'll see pass interference. But Fromm loves that throw, executes it perfectly, has thrown it thousands of times in his life, and has a real feel for that play with Wims. Probably see that again. Third and 17. Good protection. They flip it off short. Michelle trying to escape, but he's going to be spun down at midfield, well short of the first down. That time Murray wrapped him up. Not that George is into moral victories, but considering where they were when they started this drive, they were starting at their own two yard line after that punt. You imagine if you have a three and out and you have to punt the ball from inside your own two yard line or inside your own five yard line, you're going to give the ball to Baker Mayfield probably in plus territory. So that big run, if nothing else, flips the field here and puts Oklahoma a little much deeper to start their drive. Good point. Nice look. We had a 30 yarder the last time. Boots it high and he'll try to pin Oklahoma back. And the first catch made by Lamb at the 10 yard line. So 328 until halftime. Sooners trying to add to the lead. Sermon's in the game and he's got the football and he's got a crease. The freshman off and running. Gets a downfield block, barrels ahead. A physical finish to the run and that fires up the OU sideline. Well, this is this is two backs in the backfield. Rodney Anderson goes in motion and leaves Sermon back there. Look at the two linemen up front. This is the counter play that Oklahoma runs all the time. Ben Powers and Orlando Brown lead him around. They do a good job of getting a hat on a hat, and that's how you finish a run. Sermon, who's from the state of Georgia, runs right through DeAndre Baker. 31-yard gain. Great job spelling Rodney Anderson. He's back in there now to the right. And he's got the football and he's top of the line of scrimmage. And then last two plays putting again a little bit of a change up putting both the backs back there together Anderson and Sermon. And as it, it may not seem like a big deal but when you're changing formations it affects communication for the defense of so Roquan Smith and the linebackers. Now you see Sermon check out. You see a wide receiver Michael Jones check in constantly making this Georgia defense have to communicate and adjust to the looks that Baker Mayfield and the offense is giving him. Three receivers to the right on second and nine. Mayfield instead looks to the left and now scrambles across the middle. Overshot Lamb who is running free there. Remember what Kirby Smart told us, he said, look, we're very comfortable and confident that we can control the running game today. But if not, we're in trouble. It all starts with that, and yeah. they have not been able to control the running game. No, not at all. It's been a very balanced attack, 182 yards. Mel Tucker trying to find some answers. To me, it starts with that defensive line and how they can try to win at the line of scrimmage. You've got to give Oklahoma a lot of credit. That's a real strength of theirs all year. Five returning linemen from last year up front. They know each other inside and out to go along with Baker Mayfield as a three-year starter quarterback. Play clock winding down in this third and nine play. It's a screen. Brown in the clear. The sprinter cuts back. Hollywood Brown slips down inside the 15. 
They're lucky he didn't find the end zone. That guy's the fastest sooner. Yeah, it's kind of a mesh route. Watch the two receivers crossing each other underneath. And great block again by C.D. Lamb to give him more room to run. Playing fast after the big play. It's Flowers in the backfield. Penetration, and the dogs come up with a huge play. It was Tyler Clark who's had a nice first half, and it's now Oklahoma that's going to have to spend a timeout. Rotating a lot of bodies up there. This is just quickness and slow off the ball by uh, Oklahoma, just shooting a gap here. He has good quickness at 300 pounds, and they're rotating a lot of bodies. I'll tell you, Oklahoma, fortunate that the ball didn't come out. Bedette comes in motion. Pop pass. Can he get the edge? No, he is driven back. That's Smith, a high-impact tackle at the three-yard line. Roquan says, that's the kind of hit I've been waiting all half to make. Well, it's yeah. third down. He now. took out an entire first half of frustration with this hit right here. They use it as a decoy. Murray and, and uh, Baker go to the left, but right there, what a hit. Good team pursuit. Smith cleans it up. Perfect form tackle. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Bidette lucky to hold on to that football. Third and goal. It's a reverse. Lamb throws it to the quarterback, and Mayfield catches a touchdown pass. And goes sprinting down the field. <laughs> Trickery from Riley, and the Sooners stretch the lead. Well, that put the Georgia defense in a bind. They, they, they knew that after the, the sweep and the handoff, that the ball's probably going to try to come back to Baker Mayfield. And Roquan Smith actually was out there with him, DeAndre Baker. But at some point, you got to go try to tackle Lamb, who's about to run into the end zone. It's a 17 point lead. Lamb. Back to Mayfield. Yeah, Lamb's going to come here. Once Baker makes a sweep and he goes out here, watch Roquan Smith. He reads it. He instinctively feels, okay, I got to get out there. I got to get out there. But right here, both these defenders are in trouble. Either make the tackle or stay back. They decide to try to go make the tackle, and there's nobody left for Baker Mayfield. And C.D. Lamb sold it well, didn't flip the ball oh, to no. his right hand. Oh, no. was very I near think the right line now he's thinking, I'm going to run. And then once they commit, then he just said, okay, you're just going to give it to me. I'll take it. So Lincoln Riley, who does call the place for this offense, that cat and mouse game, all those timeouts, the different looks from the Sooners. Give that one to Riley and the Sooners. Ooh, now they just booted along to, the ground here. Try to but that's a, Georgia got a chance here, maybe. Absolutely ineffective. I don't know what they're, they're thinking there. This, this, this squib kick has given... Georgia a chance now the Oklahoma end you throw it in the end zone well, Perhaps take one shot down there and they, they have a timeout to spare if they want to try to set up a field goal well, If they obviously it'd have to be a really quick throw mm -hmm. with five seconds to go have that one timeout They need to try to get about 17 yards to give Blankenship a decent shot and Georgia's putting in Some of their receivers looks like actually Mark Andrews yeah, Oklahoma's back. Got Lamb is back Oklahoma's putting in a lot of their Kind of almost like a hand steam back deep to try to knock down a Hail Mary. From rolls out. They do fire it short, and the catch is made. No out of bounds, and now they'll have to try to spend a timeout. Smart sprinting down there. Godwin well, couldn't get out. Kirby, One second to go. Yeah, Kirby Smart was calling a timeout while the ball was in the air. I mean, he's yelling, timeout, 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 timeout. <laughs> Knowing that in case he didn't get out of bounds or pick up a first down to stop the clock, it, it, somebody's going to make, make sure that I want this clock stopped. These three points are critical. These are, this would be huge going in at halftime for Georgia. Championship just missed earlier from 48. This. Er, by far the longest of his career. Steps into it and drives it. Wow, hot ride. Comes up with three. That's a Rose Bowl record. And Oklahoma made to pay for that swift kick just before halftime. 
Good job by Georgia not throwing the Hail Mary with five seconds, trying to pick up the yards to get, at least give him a shot, and it pays off with a great kick. Well, Kevin Butler told you he was exactly right. That was about his range. Yeah. Hot Rod comes through, cut the lead to 14. Time now for AT&T field pass to Tom Rinaldi is with Coach Riley. Chris, thank you very much. Lincoln, know you're up 14. What was the strategy there on the squib? Just uh, try not to kick it and hit somebody. You know, he just hit a bad kick. So we wanted to squib it down there, not give him a chance for a turn. We just didn't execute very well. Your message to your team here up as you head into the second half and try to close it out. Oh, it's going to be a four-quarter game. We knew that coming in. That's what we expected. Uh, we did a lot of things good the first half, but we also have a lot of things that we need to do better. Lincoln, appreciate it. All right, thanks, Tom. Maria. All right, Kirby, coming into this game, we knew Oklahoma led the nation in total offense. Absolutely. Describe what you've seen from your defense in the first half. Poor performance on our part as coaches. We didn't have these guys ready to play right now. The good news is we can still make some adjustments, come back, fight. Offense is keeping us in the game. We just got to tackle better. We got to stop the run, try to make them one-dimensional. All right, we know Oklahoma gets the ball coming back out for the second half. What has been the message to the team, and what are you going to echo in the locker room? Settle down and go play. Our guys playing a little nervous. They got to go out and play and relax and got to get after the quarterback. All right, thanks for your time. 651 combined yards in a wild first half as the Heisman Trophy winner has Oklahoma up by 14. End of the first half in Pasadena. Back to the studio after these messages. You're watching the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual on ESPN. And welcome back. Set for the second half, the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. A dizzying first half of the offenses. Six touchdowns, a couple of field goals. The Sooners having their way. The Dogs offensively almost on a 600-yard pace, but only ran 28 plays. They were only one of five on third down, so couldn't extend drives and play keep away from Mayfield. Yeah, the third downs hurt them, and I think getting behind really affected how Jim Chaney wanted to try to attack. He told us last night, we talked about, you know, what are, what are you going to do? How are you going to try to attack? He said, to be quite honest, how we defend Baker Mayfield will dictate what we're going to do offensively. But I don't think there needs to be erratic changes as they start this second half. Remember, the defense has to come out and try to get a stop, try to stop the bleeding, so to speak, to be able to get the ball back to Jake Fromm. But I don't think you scrap the playbook and what the plan has been, it, yet at least at this point, only down 14. That, that field goal at the end of the half was big for them to cut it to two touchdowns. Now Kirby Smart's label for his defense's performance in the first half was poor. So no doubt an animated conversation with that group in the locker room here. But he also looked in the mirror. He, he really said it was on the, us, uh, the coaches. He, he, didn't, he really wasn't pointing the finger at the players. He was talking about how we did a poor job of putting him in position to make plays. So we'll see what his adjustments are. Remember, that's something that he and Nick Saban had a great reputation for when he was in Tuscaloosa. Second half adjustments. Hot Rod Blankenship all pumped up off his career-long 55-yarder, boots it to the goal line. And this is Jeff Bedette. And Bedette tackled short of the 15. That's a good job by the Dogs coverage team. That's Anderson. Cuts it back. Muscles for about two. Of course, there's that counter play to start this first half. They pull the big left guard, Ben Powers, and Orlando Brown. Kind of a staple of Lincoln Riley's offense. Anderson, a couple of touchdowns, almost you know, 9.1 yards per carry in that first half. There's big Orlando Brown, the unanimous All-American, one of three unanimous All-Americans on this offense. That is special and rare, folks. Mayfield and Andrews, the others. Mayfield rolling out. Got some space, but he's chased and knocked out. Reggie Carter, speedy linebacker, ran him down. It'll be third and long. Uh, he was trying to slip his H back, Dimitri Flowers, out into the flat, but it was great penetration. Good speed by Georgia. Remember, Natrez Patrick is out, been suspended for this game, and Reggie Carter, who's played a lot of football as a senior, showing the speed that he has to chase Baker Mayfield out of bounds for a short loss. Sooners 6 of 8 on the third down of the first half. They need 9. C.D. Lamb getting single coverage to the left of the quarterback. Mayfield's looking to the right, gets it out, and Brown... He's going to be knocked down just short of the first down. So the Dogs defense gets a crucial stop. Jonathan Ledbetter, the defensive lineman, tracked down the little receiver. 
That's exactly what Georgia needed to do. They got him to third down and long. Baker Mayfield has been playing on his terms in his first half. When he has seen third down, many times it's been third and two and third and four. This time third and long, he can he hits the pass, but the speed of that Georgia defense keeps him short of the first down. Nicole Hardman is back deep out of respect for him. They squib kicked at the end of the first half, but that was poorly executed by Seibert, and it gave Georgia a chance at the field goal. Hardman takes this punt and will sprint to the edge, gets some blocks. Miko Hardman swerving, curving, and knocked down finally at midfield. He is a dangerous guy. He's speedy and he's shifty, and he makes things happen on the return. He's, he's one of those guys, he gets the ball in his hands, you just hold your breath. So Georgia has done its job. The defense forces a punt. Punt return by Hardman sets up Fromm on the offense at midfield. It's an offense that prides itself on running the football and wearing teams down up front in the second half. It's the 12th running play of this game for the Dogs, but they've had great success. Chubb not down yet. Churning and chugging to the end zone. And the dogs cut the deficit in half. This is what makes Nick Chubb special. And this is exactly what Kirby Smart talked to his team at halftime about and why they're not out of this game down 14. Get a stop, get the ball back, put the ball in the end zone, and now you're down one score. A powerful. 225 pounder who's been breaking tackles his whole career when he's healthy and he broke more here This is yards after contact Amarni Bledsoe has him there Okoronko comes over but Nick Chubb is, is again a unique back low center of gravity great balance And if you don't wrap him up, you're not gonna bring him down. It's not just a physical offensive line This is what we want to see could Oklahoma handle this you're up high against him you're not wrapping up. He gets off two more defenders, breaks three tackles, and takes it to the house for a touchdown. And again, just like that, George is right back in the game. Things have changed to Pasadena. Seven-point game. The Dets from the goal line. Good coverage again. He stopped short of the 20. Tommy's facing some noise. The Georgia faithful are in that end of the stadium. And here's our first down handoff. This is feeling a little bit like Sanford Stadium at the moment. I was going to say, this after the stop and then the touchdown and the kickoff coverage, getting them inside the 20. I don't know if you can tell at home, but this stadium has come alive, and you're hearing, hearing a lot from the Georgia faithful. And they happen to be right in front of Baker Mayfield right now. Second down, gets pressure, flips it off near side. Lamb is going to be knocked down short of the marker. Sooners will need two. On third down deciding to bring pressure there. They blitzed the middle linebacker Reggie Carter Got after Baker Mayfield he gets the ball out But he wanted to hold on to it to give himself a chance to be able to get the ball thrown a little further downfield to pick up the first down They'll need three yards and this feels suddenly crucial for Oklahoma to stem the momentum Look at the wholesale substitutions fresh big bodies on the field for Georgia and you see the umpire standing over top of the ball because Oklahoma made a substitution. Georgia has plenty of time until the umpire steps out to make that substitution as well. Anderson in the backfield. Dogs press it up close. And Mayfield, instant pressure. Did he escape? No! Sack back at the 15. Lorenzo Carter. And a host of dogs. They bring it pressure right here and right here right up the middle Roquan Smith the leader forces him out of the pocket watch Aaron Davis right there keeps him contained They wanted to be able to contain the creativity not let him get to the outside and Lorenzo Carter there as well to help clean it up He scored in five of six first half possessions now a pair of three and outs momentum has been Wrestled away by the dogs and Hardman standing at his 40 trying to set up the offense in great field position Cybert with a high boot and Hardman lets it bounce shouldn't have that'll cost Georgia you know, about 
12 yards. So Roquan Smith, a frustrating first half for the Butkus Award winner, but the Dogs defense rising up, getting after the quarterback. Seven point game as Georgia goes back to work on O. So here goes from, and that Dogs running it back to work from the 29. A first down throw, pressure from the backside to get the ball out quickly, and Terry Godwin, the first down catch to the 40. Soft coverage brought to blitz from Steven Parker. Nice job of getting the ball out by Fromm just before Parker could get to him. And look at Godwin, what he's been able to do this year. He doesn't have speed necessarily to go downfield, but he has great quickness, especially when you give him a, a soft cushion like that. They get him the ball underneath. A Georgia team that has been dominant, Kirk, in the third quarter all season. 147 to 27. They've outscored opponents in the third quarter, allowed only three third quarter touchdowns all season long. So this continues a trend. Chubb, for once, is stacked up, dropped for a loss. Emmanuel Beal teaming up with Kenneth Murray. And it's getting chippy down there. It now. sure is. It's a really, really good job by DJ Ward up front, leading the way of that defensive line, that time holding their point. And it allowed Kenneth Murray and the rest of those linebackers to come in and keep Chubb bottled up. I don't think this Sooner defense liked to hit on their quarterback at all. Playing with some energy now. Starting to feel like it could be a game of momentum swings here in this second half. And Ron back on play action, has time, delivers. Over the middle, complete. Wins again, the fingertip grab inside the Sooner 45. It's going to work all the way from the left and come all the way across. When you do that, it requires a lot of protection, a lot of time. They brought the blitz. You can see it was man to man, and Trey Norwood's trying to stay with him. 13, the freshman. Good job by Wims to work across the field. And Jake Fromm says that's his guy. I mean, when in doubt, he's going to look the ball, throw the ball to number six. He's been the top target today with four catches. They have a, a chemistry. Wims again coming. The Georgia after a couple stops at different colleges, but clicking with this freshman quarterback over the summer. Yeah, he is, he's a great target, especially in the red zone at 6 4. Put the ball up in the air to make big plays for this offense. To Maria on the dog sideline. Jake Fromm, when he first got to school in January, the first person he called, guys, was Javon Sims. They have been running routes and practicing together since last January. And Wim said he did not want to show up. It was the one time that he had to himself, but Fromm pushed him into it. <laughs> and now Fromm back to pass, surveying the field, lobbing it out of bounds. Well covered there was Wims that time. They were not going to let number six drift no, he out ran, of their sight. He, yeah, he ran the same route, but it was a different coverage. Previous coverage was man to man with the freshman Norwood. This time you see Will Johnson there. He came down was able to help out but that's exactly who he was looking to throw the ball to now what's the call here Kirk can they convert on the third down it continues to be a problem for the dogs just one for six they need seven final minute of the third quarter don't forget about Michelle out of the backfield it's a real weapon especially on third down from directing traffic running out of time we just get the playoff Michelle in the clear Sonny Michelle barrels down into the end zone, the hat trick for number one. Thirty eight yards, and the dogs down seventeen in the final seconds of the first half, a PAT away from tying this game. Chubb and Michelle Tandem going to work. Jim Cheney made a really good point to us last night. Things that get overlooked at times. This is what the freshman does, Jake Fromm. Look at the right side of the offensive line. There's no one there. Jake Fromm goes away from the left, back to the right. Something that often gets overlooked, but just getting out of a bad run play into a good run play. 
give Jake Fromm a lot of credit for making the check at the line of scrimmage. That's a lot of game prep. This is what's really separated him from Jacob Eason. This awareness and an ability to make a check in a game like this, see the weakness of the defense, get Michelle the ball, and he's off to the races. You know, sometimes we look at quarterbacks and we want to see the great passes and so many different things that they do, but a run check, getting out of a bad play and into a good play, so easy to overlook. Boot by Blankenship is returnable. The deck hesitating, waiting for some blocks to set up and is able to scoot out of bounds on the edge. And Marquise Brown, the receiver in the backfield, lined up right behind the quarterback along with Flowers and Anderson. It's a different look. Option look. They get it to Brown on the edge. Dog is able to crowd him to the boundary. Sanders forces him out. Short gain. Really nice job by D Dominic Sanders. Incredible. You think about how much football he has played. He's making his 52nd career start tonight. That's a lot of football. Opponents of Georgia have been game planning against number 24, trying to find a way to keep the safety out of the mix for four years. They haven't often succeeded. Sooners, and they squeeze in a play before the end of the quarter. They're blitzing him again. Mayfield delivers incomplete across the middle. Tight coverage again by DeAndre Baker. Quarterback knocked down. And that is the end of the third quarter. Quarter dominated by the Dogs. They score a pair of touchdowns to get the Rose Bowl game even at 31. 15 minutes to decide the birth in the national championship game. You're watching the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual on ESPN. Dusk in Pasadena. Welcome back to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Final quarter is going to be the Dogs going home to play for a national championship for the Sooners. To survive just 29 yards of offense for Oklahoma in that third quarter. Georgia had 130. And as the final quarter begins, Baker Mayfield is facing a third and 10 in his own 18. Rough third quarter for Baker Mayfield. Two of four for 14 yards. Sacked three times. Five sacks by Georgia equals the season high given up by this Sooner offensive line. Mayfield has time. This time overshoots Andrews and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dominic Sanders. And the veteran safety scampers down inside the 10. The game's first turnover sets up the dogs in scoring position. Well, sometimes when things aren't going well, you have a tendency to force things. Baker Mayfield here, the pressure on the outside there to the right is DeAndre Walker trying to make a play, and the ball sails over Mark Andrews. We just talked about Sanders and what a veteran he is, starting his 52nd game. He's reading the eyes, ball is overthrown. He's in perfect position playing center field. As that ball is very rare to see Baker Mayfield miss high. He felt that coverage, forced the issue, put the ball up, and watch Kirby Smart and Mel Tucker. This defense. It's been a totally different story in this second half against Baker Mayfield. 16th interception in the Bruin career of Sanders that ties a Georgia record. Now the dogs kind of take the lead here from the four first and goal. Plum looking for the end zone. Delivers. Touchdown. Wims gives the dogs the lead. Four straight. Check the catch by Wims. Prom went right to him. Saw man to man, put the ball away from the defender. Look at the hands, look at the strength to keep that ball away from the ground by Wims against the freshman Norwood. See how that ball is thrown only where the receiver Wims can get his hands on the ball completely away from the defender. Perfectly thrown ball by Jake Fromm. He's a basketball player that says he treats it like rebounding, boxing out, using that hand strength. Played Pop Warner football, didn't play again till his senior year of high school. Here's Wims in the Rose Bowl. It's all set up by the interception from Dominic Sanders, the overthrow by Mayfield. And the return down inside the five, and Georgia, after being down 17, as its first lead of this Rose Bowl game. 
Mayfield's turn to try to answer. Well, but this is not an unusual position, Kirk. This is a team that three different weeks in a row they had a double-digit lead. Yeah. Ended up trailing in the fourth quarter. Came back against Baylor on the road against Kansas State. Came up short at home against Iowa State. But Baker has been here a lot. Yeah, but this is a different opponent. True. With all due respect to True. Kansas State and Baylor <laughs> and those teams, no this is argument. a different deal. And it's a different setting. And you're, you're, on one hand, because you've been there and you've been able to produce in those kind of moments, it gives you confidence. But they've got to get back to what was working, and they're losing the line of scrimmage in the second half. That's the difference in this game right now. Marcella Sutton is a different kick returner. And let's see if he's going to bring one out. Oh, let's touch back. You, you see know, the first half first second half of Baker Mayfield first half he's 200 yards there's 31 points on the board things are looking good this second half has has been a struggle sacked three times unable to really get anything going at all so got the ball flips it off and it's dropped in the flat field position is certainly part of that the average field position Kirk and their six possessions their own 15. I think schematically the only thing that I've really seen change is a willingness of Mel Tucker and Kirby Smart to be even more aggressive. But I, I, I really, when you go back and look at this film, I think you're going to see a difference at the line of scrimmage between what Georgia did in the first half to what they did in the second half. Much more physical and aggressive, kind of wearing down the Sooners at the line of scrimmage. Not seen Mark Andrews make very many big plays tonight. Mayfield takes a downfield shot. Deep ball. Catch made by C.D. Lamb. He got single coverage and they pitched it down there. He beat Tyreek McGee. A slant and go. Lamb at 6-1. Goes up and over McGee at 5-10. He had a little bit of trouble holding on to the ball in the first half. That time, goes up and makes an acrobatic catch for a big play for the Sooners. At 36 yards, is that the play that can spark this offense? And now pump fake, and Mayfield takes off into the secondary, weaving down into the red zone. Same play they called earlier back up near their own end zone, where it's a quarterback design counter. Instead of running Anderson, they use him as a decoy to go out to the right, and Baker himself follows the right guard and the right tackle around the left side. Wow, well, things can change fast. They get 48 yards in those two plays, and now Anderson plows to the 12. Well, this is who Oklahoma is, just as things seem dire. And what are they going to do? You have to think, you have to realize in the blink of an eye, Baker Mayfield has the ability with these receivers to make a big play, and then it's the tempo. And all of a sudden, you get that aggressive Georgia defense a little bit slowed down, a little bit more on their heels, not quite as aggressive. We bring Flowers and Bidette into the game. Dogs bring some subs in as well. Mayfield from the pocket. Still got it. Flips it to the end zone. Touchdown, Dimitri Flowers. How could a man named Flowers not make an impact in the Rose Bowl? And the Sooners, a PAT away from tying this up again. This is fun, folks. What a game. What a drive. Six. Up 88 yards in six plays. Under two minutes. He doesn't make a whole lot of catches, but he makes high impact catches. Chris, they used a motion from Bidette to affect the eyes of the defense. You'll see him cross, but they want to get the ball to Flowers sneaking behind the linebackers, but watch the Georgia defense. Watch how they stick with it and take it away. See how that's taken away? But this is where Baker Mayfield is so dangerous. He takes away the intended receiver instead of giving up on the play, buys a little bit of time. How about Dimitri Flowers himself realizing that Baker Mayfield is going to make a play, gets away from Roquan Smith, and eventually gets away and gets the touchdown for Oklahoma to tie this game up. Tied in the playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl, 8.47 to play. Seibert. 
It's a deep and Hartman thought about it, but he'll keep it there. Michelle, that's it back. Talking about a Georgia team that's averaged 13 yards per running play. So you know what they'd love to do here. Jim Cheney, feed Michelle, feed Chubb, shoot clock, set up a game-winning score. Yeah, well, when you're running the ball as well as this offense has, that's a great plan. Remember, other than going to Auburn, almost every other game they have played, they have worn teams down in the second half with this, this philosophy and this system that they use. Play action. Rom throws it along the sidelines. Hey, he loves that route. Throws it so well. Hardman makes the catch. First down. He got the ball off right before Bledsoe got in. It's the football out there. Good job of just being able to just slide and slow himself down. Heck of an effort, actually, by Hardman, the sophomore, to hold on to that football. Chubb. That time stacked up. It's only a yard and a half. Marquise Overton, the end, got him. You know, Oklahoma's defense in the Big 12, they have built their defense to defend spread teams. You know, it's not just, hey, the Big 12, how are they going to hold up physically against an SEC offense? It's what they're built for is they see teams that are in a shotgun four wide receiver offense almost every play. And they're used to playing on the perimeter. This is a downhill game. Very different for Mike Stoops in this defense to try to defend this style. And this is not a defense, but let's face it, overloaded with the elite talent you've seen in the past from Oklahoma's defenses. Around the end, Michelle strung out, and hit hard, loses the ball. It's out. The Sooners have it. Stephen Parker, a scoop and score. Oklahoma's defense step up and make big plays when they were down by a touchdown. The answer is yes, as the veteran leader of that secondary, Parker, makes an enormous play. But Trey Norwood, in my opinion, makes the play. He come out of, this, out of the picture on the left. He gets underneath Wims and forces Michelle to have to go outside. Kelly, of course, makes the hit. How about Parker trying to keep his feet in bounds? to be able to take the ball all the way to the end zone. Huh? Going to go back and look at eventually Trey Norwood, a true freshman corner, took a calculated risk by going underneath the potential block of Javon Wims, and he got enough on Michelle to force him to slow down and to go outside where Kelly eventually got him. Receiver Wims unable to make the tackle. And Kelly fired up, excited. I want you to watch this. Typically, a corner will stay outside. This is a risk where he shoots underneath of this block right here. That, to me, is the key. Watch Norwood accelerate right there. He gets underneath, gets an arm on Michelle. Now Michelle has to kind of restart himself, and the rest of the defense has time to come over. Kelly knocks him down, but I love this play by Norwood. A true freshman rolls the dice. If he goes in there and misses, it's a different play, but he forces him after he makes contact to go outside. Kelly undercuts him, the ball comes out, and the rest is history. Try to tie this up. Remember we showed after Baker Mayfield and the offense tied the game at 38. Baker Mayfield going down there and pouring the defense. Guys, this is a pivotal point. Talking to him, telling him we got a chance. Defense delivered for their leader, Baker Mayfield. Hardman will bring it out from a yard deep. He's dangerous. Nicole Hardman knocked out of bounds. <laughs> Michelle, who's had the big knife but had the big fumble, squirts forward for four. You know Jim Cheney is a veteran. He's been around for a long time as a play caller. No panic at all. No reason to panic for Coach Cheney in this offense. Continue to try to execute. Mixing in the run with a pass. It's about execution now. Sooners bring pressure. Brown gets it out. He has a man. Godwin escapes and is wrestled down at the 40. So the young quarterback beat the blitz that time. Yep, you're right, Chris. Blitz came. He sensed it, knew that he had to get the ball out of his hands. Interesting that Oklahoma, with the blitz, still played very soft with Motley, the corner. Made it much easier for 
Fromm to get the ball out to Godwin with soft coverage up top. Remember, they brag about his awareness and ability to see coverage and understand defense. Good protection. Now it breaks down. Fromm has to scramble. Flips it off short. Michelle in space. Makes a man miss and is spun down inside the 25 by Will Johnson. First down, Georgia. How about this look right here? I thought D.J. Ward had him. It wasn't a blitz. They rushed four, but watch Ward get into him. Right there, he's got him. It looks like you know, just when you think Fromm's going to take off, there's that awareness we talked about, being able to get it down to Michelle and the offensive line. Very smart not to go downfield there, to have an illegal man downfield. How can a guy this inexperienced be seeing the game so well at this moment? Remarkable. Chubb in the game now. Here they come. Fromm steps up. Bumps into a blocker and will be tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Block running now. You know, you, you, you got to always remember the timeouts, and Kirby will help him with the timeouts. But there's again, there's no reason to have to be in hyper speed mode. Just be able to look at the defense, get, get your formation, get everything set. Again, comes down to the execution. Oklahoma's been dialing up pressure and blitzing. Bugman in motion. Play action. From has time. Now flips it into the bench. I agree. No, no reason to play in hyper speed as long as you reach the end zone. But the <laughs> yeah. way they've managed this drive, this is it. This, yeah, this is, is the it. possession yeah, for Georgia. It. It's yeah. all or nothing right here. Yeah, absolutely. I think Kirby Smart kind of knew that when he got the ball here to start this drive. With only two timeouts left. This is it. This is the last drive. You got third and ten, which means you don't have to get ten here. Clearly, it's four down territory with the game on the line here. Typically, his go-to target is Wims, who's down at the bottom of the screen. Number six. Hardman in the slot. Michelle in the backfield. Sooner showed some pressure, but back off. Fromm steps up, delivers a strike across the middle. Catch made by Godwin. Knocked down inside the 10. First and goal. Great job by Jim Chaney attacking the middle of the Oklahoma defense. It opens up, and Fromm puts the ball right on the money. Cool delivery. 16 yards on third and 10. Now thrown for the end zone, and a flag comes in. Wims was just grabbed by the freshman Trey Norwood. And he got a hold of his jersey and pulled him down. Pass interference, defense, number 13. Ball replaced the two yard line. First down. Pretty easy call. A lot of contact. Ball is catchable. You could, if you see from the other side, his left hand got in there. See the see a grabbing of the jersey. Ball is in the air. It's such a tough play to stop. They've, they've executed it so well all year. So first and goal from the two-yard line. And the dogs shift around. Overset Chubb. the left. Chubb, it's the wild dog and the running back. Direct snap, cuts back and scores! Now the poor punt set it up, but the dogs take it 59 yards in seven plays. My initial thought is he crossed that end zone. Did they score too fast with 55 seconds and three timeouts? See if they hit the extra point to tie it. Yeah, hot rod blankenship in the spotlight right now. Nice lick. The punter is also the holder. Trent Fricks, the snapper. It'll hesitation there. Had a double clutch, but he knocks it through. 45, 45, 55 seconds left. He actually started, and then he stopped. Yeah. I mean, I think he was anxious to kick it. Watch him hit. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Fortunately, it was only a PAT. He's just anxious to tie that game up. Yes. Mayfield. Three timeouts, as you said. Plenty of time to produce some magic and avoid 
what would be the first ever overtime in the history of the Rose Bowl. Marcellus Sutton for the Sooners watches it sail over his head. Three receivers sacked to the right, empty backfield. This is Anderson in motion. They fake it to him. Now sidearm pitch to Brown. And Brown, who just scares you every time you got the football, if you're a Georgia fan, gets a first down across the 35. And as soon as Brown catches the ball, he jumps back, back into the inside. You know, those Georgia defenders there. And he's just trying to get behind those big bodies on a screen, the big tight end Andrews in the right side of the offensive line. Clock running, don't spend a timeout. Play action again, a short pitch on the sidelines, incomplete. Wow, good throw. Andre Baker was in coverage. Yeah, I don't know if Baker got a hand on that or, or not, but that ball was thrown really, really well. So they've got those three timeouts. Locked down to 37 seconds. Still need to move the football for probably about 35 yards to give Cybert a chance at a long game-winning field goal. Georgia showing pressure, creeping toward the line. It's a running play to Anderson, who breaks free. Rodney Anderson hurdles out across the 45. It'll be third down and two, and Oklahoma will spend its first time out. Dogs can get a stop here. They can force a punt. And the Baker's been running some on third down tonight. Sometimes you, you forget about him as a running threat. From the pocket, Mayfield loops it downfield. It's incomplete. He overled Anderson out of the backfield. Now it's fourth down, 24 seconds to go. That is a tough throw on third and two. A wheel route to your back out of the backfield against Roquan Smith, who's running step for step. Interesting call by the Sooners there. That's yeah, so not a high percentage no, ball, was it? not at all. Not at all. As you said it, they get a very good defender on your running back. It's got to be a perfect throw to beat it, yeah. and it wasn't. And, and we'll see. We'll see what happens here on this punt. But how about the Georgia defense? We just built up Baker Mayfield and how he steps up in those situations. They did a good job of getting him off the field. Austin Seibert with no deep man back for Georgia. They had 11 up at the line. He just boots it down there and knocks it out of bounds with 17 seconds to go. But they're going to spot it. And at the 25, so all of a sudden, Georgia trying to hang on for dear life against Mayfield. Now, they got the football back with 17 seconds. Do they get adventurous, or do they play for overtime here? No, I think you got to play smart. They're just going to kill the clock here. So, Georgia was down 17 in the first half. They reeled off 24 straight. They took the lead, but a scoop and score by the Sooners. Stephen Parker changed the complexion. Georgia able to drive down and tie the game and then deny Mayfield and we go to overtime so the coin toss is coming up extra time to decide who's going to Atlanta and the championship game back after these messages you're watching the Rose Gold game presented by Northwestern Mutual Oklahoma's defense shouldn't be worn down Georgia's run just 58 plays in this game but they've been explosive Chubb is the tailback. Listen, crowd in the line against the run. Chubb tries to bounce it, and he'll be met by Okaranquo. One yard gain. Yeah, Mike, Mike Stoops taking some chances. Gets eight guys up close, brings the corner, gets his safety up there. Steven Parker trying to take away all the gaps, not give Nick Chubb anywhere to be able to cut back and make a big play. They want to try to get Jake Fromm into those third and a third and obvious passing situation here. Chubb out. And now Sonny Michelle in. Fromm making those adjustments. Has plenty of time on the clock. Handoff. And Michelle picks his way, but it's going to be a third and six for that's the dogs. What, that's what they wanted. It, 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 Good job at the point of attack by that defensive front. Now it comes down to a big third down. From his favorite target again is his buddy Javon Wims. 
It will be off to his left at the top of his frame. Covered by a true freshman. True freshman Norwood against him has been giving him a cushion. He's got a height advantage on him, too. Big cushion, you're right. From the pocket, delivered. Incomplete. It was off the hands of Isaac Nauta, the tight end who has not been targeted all afternoon. And here comes a field goal attempt. Boy, into the teeth of the defense, not to the outside, but into the middle of this defense. Ball's thrown just behind Nauta, and it goes off of his hands. Here comes. Split, boy, they split those linebackers perfectly, just unable to hold on to the ball. Blankenship, who booted a 55 yard at this point halftime, missed from 48. This from 38 in the lead. Knocks it right through. But Mayfield can win the game and send the Sooners to Atlanta and the championship game now with a touchdown. And you can see the frustration on the faces of Chubb and Michelle. College overtime where both teams get a possession. You always want to go second. Now, if you're Oklahoma, you know that they kicked a field goal. You know at the very least you need a field goal to send it to the second overtime. But you're holding out hope to be able to be aggressive, get a touchdown in this game, head to Atlanta, and try to get to the national championship game. Dogs did their job stopping the Sooners' potential game-winning drive at the end of regulation. Remember, Dimitri Flowers had some opportunities early in the game as a real threat when they moved the ball down inside the red zone. They like to sneak him behind linebackers. He's to the far right of the formation, close to you. Three receivers bunched to that side. Anderson is the back. Anderson's got it. Cuts back. And is knocked down after a four-yard gain by John Atkins. Interesting call here on first and ten. You get so caught up in, in Baker Mayfield and Marquise Brown and all these weapons and speed on the perimeter. Instead, they go back to pounding it, running the football. They're at 232 yards now on the ground, so they've been pretty effective doing that. Brown in motion. They pop it to him. Marquise Brown trying to get the edge is strung out and dropped a couple yards short of the first down by Reed. Yeah, Reed trying to set that edge. Boy, it's one thing to work with the scout team. It's another thing when Brown's in person trying to get around the corner. Reed, who's one of the fastest players on this defense, just gets enough to be able to push him out of bounds and not allow him to get to that first down. And the Sooners Keep alive the potential for a game-winning touchdown. They need two here. Hand off. Smallwood. End around. Doesn't get there. Roquan Smith rose up, and the Butkus Award winner made a huge play. We, and we haven't seen Smallwood all night. A more physical receiver, not the fastest receiver. Roquan Smith with perfect technique. How fitting the year that he's had for the game to be down at third and short. For him to make that play and not budge even an inch, he pushes Smallwood back. Offense was on the field for a long time. You wonder, did Riley think about it? Did he think about going for it? But here comes Seibert. Must make it. The force double overtime. Knocks it coolly through into the net. So a field goal for each offense in the first overtime. We had to double OT. Sooners up first. On the double overtime. Neither offense will define the end zone. Sooners did make a first down, but Seibert. From a slight angle, 33 yards. You, 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 you feel awful for any kicker who misses that, regardless of who you root for. I'm not rooting for anybody other than a great game, and I just didn't want either one of those kickers to miss that. Now they're two really likable guys, too, yeah. on top of it all. So now the Sooners back to work. It was George's choice in the second overtime, and of course they want to go on defense first. So here comes Mayfield back at the 25. Pretty conservative first series for Baker Mayfield. 
And two backs in that backfield now with Sermon and Anderson. I just wonder if they get a little bit more aggressive here trying to get a touchdown. Anderson, the keeper, you make a good point. Is the strategy different in the top of an overtime inning, if you will, knowing how good Georgia is on the other side? Yeah, I, I think it is. I, you know, especially as you move further along here into the second overtime. Lincoln Riley, you know his personality. I mean, he, a lot like Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops always had a reputation of being a little bit of a gambler, take a few chances, be aggressive. I think Lincoln Riley is kind of the, has that same approach. With that five-yard carry. Anderson over 200 in this game. Brown in motion. They fake it to him. Mayfield under pressure has to scramble. Flips it downfield. Incomplete. Again, he was targeting Andrews. Well covered, and Trent Thompson pressured him. Yeah, Thompson with a really good job of getting in there and forcing him out of the pocket. Oklahoma actually got away with a couple holds that time on the right side of the offensive line. No call, so they catch a break here and avoid the penalty. A good start to this game on third down. The Sooners have struggled lately. They are just seven of 17. Andrews in the slot to the right. Dogs jump off. It's a free play for Mayfield who flings it to the end zone. Intercepted. The pass is picked off by DeAndre Baker, but the dogs jumped offside. And Mayfield, I think, knew he had a free play. He sure did, Chris. Offside. Defense number 13. Penalty. First down. Not just a penalty that wipes off an interception, but it gives Oklahoma a first down. Yep. Critical play. Oklahoma, and I think Baker, I think he saw that out of the corner of his eye that Ledbetter had jumped up at the top. 13. He moves right there. Good job by Wren of snapping the ball while he was he was already off sides. And now Baker's gonna take a chance. And then like you said, Chris, third and five. And with that pass interference, they get the first down. Once again, they bring in Kyler Murray. This is a wrinkle, the, the backup quarterback, the true speedster, the former Texas A&M Aggie. He's to the right of Mayfield. First down. Flowers split to the left, the H-back. The debt in motion, option. Murray, the quarterback, takes the pitch from the starting quarterback, but the dogs were ready. Bellamy drove him out. Right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they told us he's one of the fastest players on the entire roster. You know, he, he, he'll be their quarterback more than likely next year, the transfer from Texas A&M. Clemson and Alabama already underway in New Orleans. That game on ESPN2 at the moment to shift here after this Rose Bowl's done. Top of the second overtime, second and ten. Again, here is the matchup that you would expect them to try to go to down here. Andrews at 6'5", 254 is tough to match up with down in the red zone. They flip it short. Anderson hit behind the line as Roquan Smith makes another huge play. Well, he had him the entire way out of the backfield. Had him man to man, wasn't surprised at all. Baker Mayfield flips it out there and Rodney Anderson never had a chance against Roquan Smith. Talked about Smith's frustration early. He wasn't an impact player in the first half of this game. He he has upped his game after halftime, especially down the stretch. Now the Sooners need 12. There will be another field goal attempt. Mayfield has time, flips it short. Brown, a long way to go. Slips one tackle, spins, but is stopped at the 10 11 yard line and it's fourth down much better job in man-to-man -man by Baker It's a crossing route. You've got receivers on the left crossing over receivers on the right a lot of times it, it creates that pick or that traffic jam where you get caught up in the clutter this time Baker's able to avoid that and eventually chase him down There's few kickers you'd rather have in this position you see Seibert's reliability 27 yards to put the Sooners on top Deflected, blocked, the dogs do it again.
think Lorenzo Carter got in there. He's got such great length. It's 6'6". I think he was able to get the penetration, get up in the air, and get his right hand on the ball. How about that, a senior for the dogs? See if it's number seven from the right side of the offense. Watch him get up in the air right there. Full extension. Yes, he gets his hand on that to prevent it from going through. They left him a gap. Carter took advantage. We mentioned how good George has been at this situation. Third time this year, they block a field goal in close, and now a field goal wins it for Georgia. Any points win it, and the dogs would head back to Atlanta for a shot of the championship. From the 25. Not the big play, you're awarded those spiked shoulder pads, and now it's Swift. And invading the backfield for the Sooners there. That's a nice play. Emmanuel Beal, the linebacker, dropped him for a loss. And you're expecting a run here and a conservative approach. They just want to be able to stay in field goal range, probably get the ball as close as they can to the middle. And Emmanuel Beal, sensing that, just coming downhill instantly as the ball is snapped. Even after it was deflected, it fell short just in the end zone. Enough of it. All right, they're going to flip from out. Direct snap here to Michelle. Chubb scored a touchdown earlier on a direct snap. Now it's Michelle's turn running all the way. Gets to the edge. Sonny Michelle will send the Dogs home to the championship game. Just like that, the Sooners' season ends, and the Dogs can dream big about a national championship. It'll be their first since 1980. Sony Michelle, four touchdowns to offset a crucial fumble, but the final word in the highest scoring Rose Bowl ever, and its first overtime ever. To Maria Taylor. All right, coach. Your third block field goal of the season results in your team going to a national championship game. How do you describe the way this game ended? What a game. What an atmosphere. You know, my heart goes out to the Oklahoma team because these guys played their tail off, and so did ours. Nobody ever quit. Everybody fought hard. So proud of these kids and seniors, man. I mean, they never quit. Let's talk about those seniors. Lorenzo Carter, he gets the block field goal when you put it in the hands of a senior running back. I mean, what does it mean? These guys came back for this moment, Coach. Impressive. Character, integrity, proud of them, man. This is a great university, and these kids pulled their tail off. In your second year as the head coach at your alma mater, you're taking them to a national championship. Let that soak in and tell me what it means to you. Go dogs. Hey, for you too, girl. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it, Tom. Massive plays as Mayfield is consoled the final game of his brilliant college career. Lorenzo Carter, one senior, made the block. That's him right there. Set up the game-winning touchdown Amazing. for Sony Michelle, his fourth today. Fourth, and don't forget the fumble that he had. Look at the blocks by Nada. Good block downfield. Look at look at the quarterback, yep. Jake Fromm, picking up a block. But remember, Michelle was the one who fumbled the ball that Oklahoma picked up and scored. How fitting that he's able to put that in the end zone. And of course, there's the reaction from Baker Mayfield will never wear a Sooners jersey again. Way to win it. Well, Georgia hopes there'll be a even better trophy presentation a week from tonight, about 50 miles from their campus in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, but there is a trophy to be presented here at the Rose Bowl, the 104th edition of the granddaddy of them all. Never had more points scored in a Rose Bowl game, never had an overtime played until today, and rarely have we seen drama like this on this classic field. Reese Davis on the field with a trophy presentation to the victorious Bulldogs. Reese. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field and welcome ESPN's Reese Davis. How about that? Was that fun or what? Congratulations to both teams and especially 
to the Rose Bowl champion, Georgia Bulldogs. We want to thank Northwestern Mutual for their continued support of college football. And now to present the Leachman Trophy, here is the president of the 2018 Tournament of Roses, Lance Tibbet. Lance. On behalf of the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual and the college football playoff, congratulations on winning the 104th Rose Bowl. I'm pleased to present the Leishman Trophy to Coach Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. Kirby celebrating with that trophy. Kirby, what was going through your mind when Sony Michelle was going down the sideline and you knew you were going to win the game? Did these kids believe they never stop chopping wood and they just keep the main thing the main thing, baby? What changed with your defense particularly in the second half? First half, you give up 31 points, more points than you've allowed in a game all season, yet in the second half, your defense was ferocious. I think we got settled down some. They did a really nice job. I mean, I got to give Oklahoma a lot of credit. Baker Mayfield's one of the best players that we've ever gone against. And uh, our kids settled down, played a little better, but our offense had our back and our special teams had our back, and we just kept chopping. Are you ready for a near home game for the national championship? Really excited for a home game. I do want to say this. I want to thank the Tournament of Roses people. President Moorhead, uh, Athletic Director Greg McGarity have done a tremendous job helping this program. And that fan base back there is the real deal. Kirby, congratulations. We've got some awards for your players, too. The offensive player of the game, Sony Michelle. Sony, congratulations. Sony, I'll ask you what I asked Kirby a minute ago. The last play, what was it like, those final few steps before you crossed the goal line? It was amazing. I mean, it was a team effort. Uh, everybody gave it all they had. And the end result was a touchdown. You're able to come back for one more year, you and Nick working together, having such a great season. One more step to go. What's going through your mind as you prepare to celebrate this and then get back to work for the championship game? We, we got we to gotta celebrate, but we got to get back to work. Because at the end of the day, we got to finish. Nobody don't remember anybody that don't finish. Well, you know what? They're going to remember what you did on this hallowed ground today. Sony, congratulations. But this Georgia team on defense, too, was tremendous in the second half. And the defensive player of the game is Roquan Smith. Roquan. First half, first half, Baker gave you guys all kinds of trouble. So did their entire offense. What changed in the second half? Uh, we knew going into the game there was a high-powered offense, so we knew we, we, they was going to give us a lot, and it was just some adversity we faced throughout the game. And just the second half, we just had to go, to go in, settle down, and just keep the main thing the main thing. When did you feel like that perhaps you had turned the momentum in the game? Uh, in the second half, when it was a lot of plays in the second half that I felt like the momentum, it was constantly turning in our favor. But then we faced a little more adversity throughout the game, but we didn't bend, a, we didn't break, we bend a little bit, but we just bounced back. What's it like to be going back to the state of Georgia to play for the national championship? Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Just knowing what, what all we've been through and whatnot, and just all we've been through, my teammates, us as a family, university, and everything like that, our amazing fan base, it's an awesome feeling. Roquan, congratulations. Thank you. The Georgia Bulldogs, champions of the Rose Bowl, they're going to play for the national championship. It would be their first since 1980. What a game it was, and the victory over Oklahoma. Chris Fowler, back to you. So will it be an all-SEC affair? You were denying the Georgia-Alabama showdown at Atlanta. Auburn took care of that. Or will it be Clemson getting past the Crimson Tide in New Orleans, that game already underway, and setting up a Clemson-Georgia championship game? Well, I think it's a great storyline, no matter what you get. The obvious one you would think and you imagine 
having Kirby Smart go up against his his mentor and former head coach with Nick Saban. That would be a great one. Uh, but I also, I, you know, with what Dabo Sweeney has done, if they're able to find a way to win, Clemson and Georgia over the years have had so many great uh, epic matchups. It'd be a pretty good matchup to see them too. A Georgia football team that was not at the top of everyone's mind in the SEC at the beginning of the season. It was all about Alabama or Auburn. They started the season ranked number 15, came out of that East. The SEC really took a lot of criticism this year, and rightfully so, because beyond the top three teams, it wasn't a very strong or a very deep conference, but it may produce perhaps an all-SEC championship game. They're going to get at least one team in there. Yeah, and how about the Mercedes-Benz Stadium with, with Georgia in their backyard? Toughest ticket in the history I, I of Atlanta. I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine the setting. You know, once we get into Atlanta next week, it's going to be a great scene no matter who gets there. But uh, really just I, we want to make sure we give Oklahoma some enough credit here, too, because they they came out and and played the way a championship team needs to play. They just came up a little bit short, unable to close the deal. And and uh, we've been talking a lot about Georgia and they deserve it. But we we uh, we definitely want to make sure we talk about Baker Mayfield, Lincoln Riley, this whole team. They had an incredible year, incredible run, came up short in one of the best games of maybe of the year, maybe one of the best championship settings we've seen uh, in a long time. Never forget it. The only thing that could have made it better was this for the national championship. Instead, it yeah. sets up Georgia for a chance to win a championship. Boy, we hope you enjoyed this one as much as all of us did. We're proud to bring you this Rose Bowl game every chance we get here on ESPN. The game was produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley, who directed his 18th Rose Bowl game today. Masterful job by our entire production crew. We appreciate that. We appreciate Mike Black and Darren Brown and Mark Avento and Dave Kataya up here in the booth and all of our hardworking men and women who helped bring you this classic Rose Bowl game. The first ever overtime Rose Bowl and the highest scoring Rose Bowl ever. We will see you a week from tonight in downtown Atlanta for the college football playoff national championship game. It'll be the dogs against either the Crimson Tide or the Clemson Tigers. Semifinal number two. Enjoy that one on ESPN. So long for now from Pasadena.